Today guys, we're gonna get the 5.2 liter twin turbo running with the twin turbos on it. JT, aka Fluffy is here. I don't know why you're talking, let's get working. Facts. That was simple. We're gonna get the distributor clocked in, so if you guys cranked your motor over with the distributor out, or you took the cam out, or you had to take the drive gear in the back out, I'm gonna show you guys how to resync this all up together. You will still have to use a scan tool after you're done, but this will get it extremely close. So the first thing you wanna do is get this balancer onto TDC. And then the second thing after you get that done, uh, take your distributor, and there's a little cylinder number one right there, and the rotor should be pointing straight at that. You can just get it somewhat closer right now until you get it in the truck actually. But that's what you're shooting for when you get it in. All right, so now we're back here. So right here is the actual, right there, is the actual oil pump uh, slash distributor drive gear. And you can see that cutaway right there where it lines up. You want that cutaway like pointing at this very front intake bolt right here. So it should be perfectly aligned with this front intake bolt. So get motor TDC line lined up with timing cover where it says TDC and then you want the oil pump drive gear slash distributor drive gear in there that little slot lined up with this front intake bolt and then we're gonna get our distributor dropped in and you see how that's flat right there so lining that up in the oil pump slot right there so that's lined up and then you can see how you can rotate the actual distributor without rotating the rotor so then we want this slash right there that says cylinder number one right there lined up with the rotor and then you can crank your tensioner down and that's how you line up your distributor on one of these guys all right fluffy you go back to drilling thank you all right guys so we got the oil turbo oil drains put into the valve covers jt drilled those holes out uh our oil feed back there which comes right here for right now um, new cap and rotor, you saw me clock the distributor, um, valve covers going on, then intake manifold, then plug wires. So Eric's going to show us how to put oil into his 5.2. I am, huh? It's an easy way to lube everything. Yeah, that's all we got. Oil change is done. Yeah, we still need two and a half more ports though. <laughs> that's like two and a half. Uh, we're running 1540 Rotella, or actually this is Mopar, but... Same stuff, different day. Thick boy stuff. Yes. Guys, JT's getting that last header put on. We got the manifold valve covers. We got a lot of stuff put on here. It's starting to actually look like a motor. We got this side header all tight. JT's just tightened down that side. Uh, that guy right there, the red and blue things are oil feed for the turbo. So there'll be a Y block off of that going to each turbo. Um, it is tapped in back there off of the oil pressure sensor. Uh, we got the fuel rails on. We just have the stock injectors in it for right now just so we can fire it up and get distributor sync set correctly. And then we will put the big 80 pound an hour injectors that I have in it. And we'll drop the tank and put a Walbro 450 in and the correct fueling. Right now I am going to start welding up the wastegate placement on the actual uh, little corner tube pup up pipe from the turbo. So like right here we'll put the wastegate in. So today's Sunday, uh, last night we got a lot done. We got the radiator put in, we got our electric fans put on, we got the turbo headers put on, alternator, uh, power steering pump, tensioner pulley, intake manifold, valve covers, we got the oil drain put in, the oil feed, stuff plugged in, 160 degree thermostat, uh, ported and polished throttle body that I did. We got a lot done last night and put on. Right now, I am welding the wastegate mounts on for the turbo itself. So we're getting that all TIG welded. I haven't welded stainless in a while, but this is turning out pretty decent. All right, guys, you guys ready for this? Holy crap. The twin turbos are back on. We got the wastegates on, fully welded on. Uh, these are like 44 millimeter eBay wastegates. I can't, re they're some off-brand. I don't even know what springs in them. It feels like probably like a seven PSI spring in it right now. We got some other springs back there too. Um, we'll be running this feed hose right to the bottom of the hat on the wastegate. Um, we got the turbos in, we got the oil supply fitting in, we got the oil drain fitting in. Um, our oil supplies right here, and then I talked about before is our oil drains going to the valve cover. 
We need to clock the compressor side of the turbo a little bit on both of them. This one a lot and this one a little bit. Uh, this one radiator hose is definitely going to have to be a custom piece right here so it'll probably go around and then go wrapping around that way. Uh, maybe a universal radiator hose. I don't know yet. We'll figure that out in a little bit. But I'm going to clock these turbos and then I'm going to start working on the oil drains that go to the valve covers from the bottom of the turbos to the valve covers. So I'm going to get to do into that right now. So guys, I'm building all these AN lines. You can see I just finished this turbo drain line right here. This is our oil feed line. So I decided we should probably show you guys how to build some AN lines. Not very hard, just uh, something if you've never done before is just weird. Unlike anything else, it's just something, if you've never done it before, it's kind of a, looks daunting and it looks scary, but it's really easy to actually make these lines perfect and how you want them. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build the oil drain for this side. I would be building the feeds right now, but I got the wrong T. I got like a 6 a.m. to two 4 a.m.s, and I need all 4 a.m. T. So that'll be here tomorrow. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys how to build this oil drain from right here where my thumb is to right there on the valve cover where my finger is pointing with some awesome stainless steel braided line. The kits we are using is Evil Energy braided uh, AN hose. We got 4 AN and we got 6 AN. If you guys wanna pick this stuff up, there will be a link down in the description below from Amazon. It helps the channel a lot and it helps make this build what it is. So go pick up some AN line. I really like this Evil Energy stuff. It's cheap and it works really good. I got the E85 rated stuff. Even the V-band clamps we're using is Evil Energy. I'm actually very impressed with that brand for how cheap they are. All right, so the first fitting we're gonna use is this 90 degree under the turbo. Um, you should pre-fit all your fittings on before you actually install them because they're kind of a pain to get them off once they're already on. But I know this fits because I already did that. So we're gonna take our 90 degree fitting here, uh, the red side here. This is the AN side and this is the side that goes to the hose. We're gonna unscrew it. And then you're gonna see the lock washer, or actually the lock fitting. And then this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hose end and we're gonna push this down. And then we're gonna take this side, push it on over. And then we're gonna take our tape off. Just normal electrical tape. that and then while it stabs our fingers we're gonna pull back the sheathing um, some hoses you actually just put the lock collar over the whole uh, metal and the plastic on um, this style we do not we actually pull the stainless steel sheathing away and then we're gonna take this uh, there's a tape around here if you can see it so it only goes one way it goes this way and we're gonna push that on all the way until it's all the way to the tippy top of it. And then we're gonna run this guy through. Just like that. And then we're gonna push our actual fitting onto here. And the first thing we're gonna do is push it. that. Then we're going to take this, start threading it over by hand. When it starts getting tight, push that hose on just to make sure it's fully seated. Then we're going to take it over to the vise and we're going to put it in the vise. Put it in the vise, making sure that the nut has room to go down on it. They make fancy AN wrenches so you don't scratch these, but I don't care that much, so we're just gonna cinch this guy down permanently. And then these don't have to be stupid tight, guys. It's aluminum, so it's very easy to start ripping the threads out on them, and they will break. So just a pretty snug fit, like hand tight and then probably like one turn or even just a half a turn 
Um, I did about one turn. I did hand tight and then one turn all the way around. And then I like to line up this part because if they're off, they drive me nuts. So we're gonna go put this on the truck and then figure out our length to put on. So now that we got that 90 degree AN fitting installed on the turbo and we got our fitting we're gonna use installed on our oil drain placement, which is our valve cover on this guy. We're gonna tape where we want to cut it. So I just like to line it up and then go right where the cross half is. So perfectly in the center of this tape is gonna be the perfect size. So we're gonna cut this with my bandsaw and then we will install it right onto that guy just like we did with mm -hmm. our 90 degree fitting. So just like, boom. Just like that, we got another oil drain done on the turbos. So now all we got left is the oil feed. We did have to move the alternator because I had to cut the bracket a little bit to fit the nut in there with the AN fitting right there. So that will be put back in here shortly. But uh, the oil feeds will be doing the same way as we did the oil returns just with some smaller line instead of 10 AN that will be 4 AN. And then going to the oil feeds on the top of the turbos and the drains going out the bottom of the turbos. There is a restrictor in here. Um, I don't know which size it is, but it's what came with the turbos, so it should be correct. Who knows? Uh, if they start smoking, then we know. So guys, we got the turbos, we got manifolds, everything hooked up. We got oil feeds done. We got the coil pack remounted. We got everything hooked up. Everything's kind of a jumbled mess right now because I just want to get fired for the night. But I will come back and fix all this, but I really want to hear it make noise, don't you? Yes. So we got some coolants in it, this ghetto radiator hose for right now. I'll come back and make a cool radiator hose. Uh, oil feed's kind of ghetto right now. Um, lots of things not very in place in how I want it right now, so things will be changed. shot the caps off the turbos. Yep, I, and then I, there was also a fireball. I know, when it backfires, yep. boom! <laughs> I want to see what that does to the hood when <laughs> it's sticking halfway up. Dude, it sounds so cool. It does. It, it really does. as I thought it would be, but holy crap, dude. Oh, it's beautiful. It runs really good. You can hear a belt squeal because of, uh, uh, well... Six rib and the uh, stealing... Uh, um, the sticking tensioner. <laughs> oh. Guys, I'm gonna start it <laughs> It sounds mean. It revs up mean. Uh, Limiter is right now set at 5,000 RPMs. And you guys heard that for a little bit there. This is like a 7,000 RPM cam, so 5,000 RPM is nothing for it right now. Um, belt squeaks really bad, and that is because the tensioner is broken. It doesn't actually tension, plus we probably should get something better than the six rib belt on a seven rib setup. So you guys heard belt squeak. 
or the belt eating itself. That wasn't there From, before. No, it wasn't. That's probably because revving it up and the tensioner is so loose. Yeah. Probably yeah. shouldn't do that much anymore if this is Maggie's belt. Well, it's not good. It's probably trash now. See yeah, what you how, do. Look how loose this already got. That's why look. it's. It's look at that. That tensioner just tension, died. Did the tensioner just go back a little? Yeah. Well, it's supposed to be spring. It's supposed to be tight. Well, yeah, yeah. but it's seized. <laughs> yes. So we'll get a new tensioner. We'll get a new belt. We'll get an actual seven rib belt for it. But we know the length now because Maggie hooked us up with her new belt that was supposed to go in her. But oh well, she's nice. Oh, I'm excited. I'm pumped. Are you pumped, GT? Very. Ugh. This is gonna be my truck too. I thought that was our deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll clean up a bunch of stuff this coolant hose is ghetto we got a lot of stuff to clean up but it runs really good and I'm happy with it for right now we just we got finished the intercooler piping we have the intercooler sitting right there um, just a bunch of stuff to clean up before we can actually go to the dyno we got to put injectors in it we got to actually tune it we got to get street tuned oh yes but yeah guys I hope you like this video this thing's insane it is um, subscribe if you have not. Hit the like button down below. Vote for the turbo bang through the hood. We don't want that clean cut. That's lame. And let me know down below if you guys want to see the turbos cleanly cut out of the hood like a lot of you guys have said. Don't listen to JT. We'll do whatever you guys want. Or if you want to see them ripping out of the hood. He doesn't, he doesn't matter. He doesn't matter. So comment down below. Like this video. Subscribe. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Keep it boosted. Oh yeah. Keep it boosted. Say keep it boosted. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let me get you zoomed in here. All right, let's hear it. <laughs> I want a man scream. Keep it boosted. Here, I'll help you. Okay. <laughs>